Hi. Go ahead. Come on up. Yep. I have a question, and Ted has a question, too. Uh, Ted has a question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's real. Of course he is. Yeah, he's a real beast himself, yes. But, uh, uh, my question for my question is, uh, what do you uh, feel has contributed to the legacy? What, um, what made the film so great in being one of the few animated films to be nominated for an Academy Award? Yes, that was very special. It was, um, I think just the message of the film is something that will always be uh, timeless. You know, I mean, the beauty is, you know, seen within. And I thought it was very interesting, too, that Belle was the first uh, female heroine to not be looking for a man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she was, she wanted more and wanted to, you know, learn about life and adventure, and the man just happened. She didn't, you know, put her whole life into that. So it's, I, I love that part of the film, too. Yeah, Ted wants to know, hoping your husband doesn't mind, but can he ha but Ted, can Ted ask for a hug from you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's interesting, too, that, um, Linda Wolverton was the writer for Beauty and the Beast. She's also the writer for Frozen, and that theme seems to carry over very importantly for Linda. That uh, and Maleficent. Uh, and Maleficent. That uh, that uh, yeah. a woman shouldn't be defined by uh, the prince that she happens to be hunting at the time. She uh, <laughs> is a very important cause, actually, for Don Hahn too, the producer from Beauty and the Beast and many Disney films. It's a a, a recurring theme for them and they all have children and they all have daughters and I know Don said you know Don always said I want my daughter to be able to watch these movies and feel good about what she walks away with when exactly. she sees these movies yeah. exactly it's what true. is your favorite character in Beauty and the Beast what is my favorite boy character in Beauty and the Beast Belle <laughs> <laughs> was that a trick question <laughs> that's a trick question <laughs> the Beast and what Robbie did with that role, Robbie Benson, I think, you know, it was really weird. In the beginning, when I was first cast, they hadn't cast the Beast yet. And Robbie actually hid his identity when he sent his tape in for the audition, because he thought there'd be prejudice against... Because if those of you are too young to remember, Robbie was the heartthrob of the 70s. Um, he was in a lot of films and stuff, and he was known for this very soft, sweet voice. And, but what they didn't know is he's such an amazing actor and has such amazing vocal skills. So he sent his tape in, and then he got cast. And then there was a thing in, what was it, uh, one of the top magazines. People I think Magazine. It was People Magazine said, okay, um, we know that Paige O'Hara, Angela Lansbury, Jerry Orbach, Broadway veterans, good choices, but Robbie Benson, question mark, is the beast. And it was like, I got so mad. I, it was like a great satisfaction when the movie came out and everyone fell in love with Robbie's performance as the Beast. Yeah, so. a lot of times when they cast a film like this, it's done just listening. They don't actually watch the people. It's not till much later in the process that they actually get to the point of where they look at people. And so when Robbie submitted his audition tape, he lied about his name. He didn't tell them who he was. <laughs> and they heard what they wanted to hear. And it wasn't until they brought him back in that they realized that that's who they were dealing with. Wasn't he amazing in the movie? Oh, yeah. And he really does do all that roaring stuff. He really, he's the guy that does it. it there's no, I mean, they, they bring up the volume, but in terms of what he does register-wise in the film, it's absolutely Robbie. Yeah, it is. Okay. I was wondering, I've heard a lot of rumors about the Beast's real name. Is there any real name to the prince? <laughs> Disney will always deny it. <laughs> what was the rumor you heard? And I'll tell you if that's the one. I've heard it was Adam. Yes. Thank you. That's very, very man. Where obscure. did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Only the animators and the people in Disney knew that. That's awesome. Okay. So, thank you for coming here today. You're my mom's, well, Car Belle's favorite, uh, has you. her favorite prison. Thank but you. But what I wanted to ask you was, what is your opinion on Belle from Once Upon a Time? I haven't seen enough of her to make a full judgment. But from what I've seen, I love her. And the actress that plays that character, remember we hung out at Disney World together, and uh, <laughs> she was, she's an amazing person, that young lady. She really is. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. What's your favorite scene? That's a tough one. Um, I think my favorite scene is the snow scene, when they're having the snow fight and they're seeing something there. 
And there's a moment in the film where Belle, he's trying to get the little bird, you know, and then when she touches his arm and he looks at her, that is the moment that we decided she realizes she's in love with the beast. The director and the writers all, and myself, all said it was that moment. And that's when she runs behind the tree and is like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, she doesn't know what she's feeling. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell them about the wolf scene. Tell them about how they did the wolf scene for you and they just put oh. you in the studio and, and, and recorded you. You watched it. She'd never seen it before. Tell them. About yeah, they said, we're going to surprise you on this one because with everything else, I did the voice first and then they animated it, except for the scene with the wolves, which they did the animation first and they said, okay, we're going to put a microphone on you. Go. Just react when you see it. And so it was one take. <laughs> But they scared me to death. I was oh, crazy. <laughs> um, is beauty? Wait, I, I forgot. Wait, no. Sorry, take your time. Uh, um, other than Beauty and the Beast and Frozen, are there any other like Disney movies that you worked on, or anything around it, or any? Um, well, of course, all the sequels and stuff, Enchanted Christmas and Belle's Magical World, and. Um, only other Disney movie I've done in the recent years was a little tiny spot in the movie Enchanted. Oh, what was your role? <laughs> I played a soap opera star. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's a trivia for you. Anybody else know how many princesses were in that film? Because they, a couple of them did little cameos. How many were in there? I know, I know Jody Benson. Jody Benson, what did she Jody. play? They, yeah, she was one of the leads. The big, the big shot of her was right by oh, the fish Adina, tank. Remember in yeah, the office they had Adina the big Adina fish Mandel tank? was in there. And who else was in it? Adina Menzel, Elsa. Uh, no, it was Judy Q. Yeah, Judy, Adina Menzel was yeah. one of the leads. She yeah, was the lead, was and then Judy was, was in princess. it as well. You remember what scene Judy was in? Judy Kuhn? No. Remember when the prince knocks on the door, yeah, and the pregnant. woman opens it in the, in the robe and stuff, and she looks at him and says, you're too late, and slams the door. <laughs> <laughs> that was Judy Kuhn, the voice of Pocahontas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay, hi. hi. Um, I'd first like to thank you for being such a big part of my childhood. Um, thank you. Uh, I've always looked up to Belle as a uh, heroine and someone to idolize because she's so independent and so unapologetically who she is. And I had a question which was, when, you, when the film was in production, did you think it was going to become the classic and the phenomenon that it has become? I did think it would become a classic, but I didn't think it would be to the level that it went. Okay. And it wasn't really until we went to the New York Film Festival where it was shown, because I'm an old Broadway girl. I, I went to New York when I was 17, and I'd been working on Broadway for many years before I got Belle. Um, but I know how tough the critics are in New York. And we showed it, it was about three quarters finished, and the rest of it was hand drawn, um, not quite finished yet, for the New York press. And when they all stood up for 15 minutes and didn't sit down and cheered, I thought, if they're this impressed with it, then I know there's something really special about this. And thank you. Thank you. Hello again. <laughs> my buddy who came to my line a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Um, it has been 23 years since the film was released in 1991. Do you remember doing all the voice, it, the voice of Belle and remember all the... Uh, sorry about it. And all the animation that was. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you oh, remember of course. all it was, that? To me, it was like it was yesterday. <laughs> really? Yes, I know it's a long time, but right. you know I've lived with it through generations of uh, of nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews, and yes. <laughs> so I. No, but I remember all of it. Yes. Yeah, tell and, them about recording the soundtrack when you guys went in and recorded the soundtrack in which New York. Part? You can tell. No, go ahead. Which part are you talking? Oh, oh, well, with Angela. Yeah, the whole part. Yeah, we actually did record the the, the music with a full uh, orchestra live, so yeah. that was really fun. And uh, Angela Lansbury, who was Mrs. Potts, as you know, great Broadway star, starred in many musicals. She was so afraid to sing the title song of Beauty and the Beast. She said it, it's too difficult. I can't sing it, and whatever. And we said, Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, she gets up there. Um, in front of the orchestra, the music starts, she sings the song in one take, and people were crying in the entire room because really? she was that good. It was that good. And I remember when I was 17, I saw her in Gypsy on Broadway 
six or seven times. I would sneak in at intermission and watch the second half. And I told her about that. And she's, long story short, when we did the Oscars, she was the one that introduced me. And I was really, really nervous. I mean, I was shaking and I looked over and she was shaking. This is right before I sang. And she said, Paige, why, why are you so nervous? And I said, Angie, why are you so nervous? She says, honey, when you get to be my age, you learn when you're supposed to be nervous. This is it. <laughs> I get it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, this is such a huge honor. You've been such a huge part of my life with the movie. And when our high school did Beauty and the Beast, I was the footstool. And cool. Let's yeah. choose the footstool, guys. <laughs> um, and I and I know my mom loves you in this movie, and I think a big part of it's because she loves to read, and Belle was a reader, and that's my favorite part of Belle because I love to read. I was just wondering, um, do you have a favorite book to read, or? Oh gosh, <laughs> I can't pick a favorite. I mean, it's the it's the favorite of the month, whatever you you know. <laughs> yeah. How about what your, is your How about your Maximum Ride series, your James? Oh Patterson yeah, I'm book. hooked on those, James Patterson Maximum Ride series. Have you all read them? Yeah. Don't you love her? My, my wife flies Max. all the time in her dreams at night. And she just <laughs> flaps around when she's sleeping. She's flying. So uh, the Maximum Ride series is about a girl that's genetically engineered, and she has wings, and she flies. So it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for the film to come out of that one. Well, thank so, you so much. Thank you. Hi. Oh, look at uh, your outfit. <laughs> I'm married. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Like you oh, played a my huge pleasure. part in my childhood. Belle was an inspiration to me, and she's the reason I love to read. Um, so I was wondering, which Disney princess do you think Belle can relate to the most? Do I think Belle will go ahead? Which Disney princess do you think Belle can relate to the most? None of them. None? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Because uh, Frozen hadn't come out yet. <laughs> I think maybe it would be Mulan. Yeah. She's strong like Belle. I think that would be the one I'd pick. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, hello. Hi. I hope you're having a great afternoon. I am. Um, uh, just a quick question. If you could voice any other Disney princess, who would you choose? Wow. That's a tough question, Michael. Don't look at me, baby. <laughs> wow. Because they were all so perfect at what they did. I don't think I could do it any better <laughs> you know it's just Jody Benson and I kid each other because we've done voiceovers for each other when we've been sick like when she was the voice of Barbie and got sick I went in and imitated her voice <laughs> she's done the same for me um, I think Jody and I are the most alike of all the princesses but I, I there's none that I would none? something new that comes out in the future I'd like okay. to do all right. thank you thank you you know it's, it's interesting because um, uh, and there's a little story that the, the, the princesses, their voices become so well recognizable by people that it's really difficult to put them in something else, you know, without everybody hearing it and going, oh, my gosh, that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was funny because um, when they first did the, the Broadway version of it, we were out of the, out of the country. Paige was doing a show. And uh, we came back, and Disney Theatrical called us up and said, would you like to go and see the Broadway version of it? And uh, Paige had reservations, but she said, sure. Uh, Susan Egan was doing um, the Bell in the original Broadway version. And Paige was nervous about seeing it, how it was translated, you know. And, and uh, there was a, a, a little girl sitting in front of us with her parents. And the show started, and Susan came out and started singing the opening number. And this little girl turned to her mom and said, that's not Bell." <laughs> this really big in voice. voice. So it was really, you know, it's kind of... For, as far as Disney is concerned, Paige will always be Belle, and she won't ever be anything else. Well, it's also because they wanted my voice. I didn't have to alter, alter my voice, really, except to make it softer. Yeah, like, I, think, I think Paige so. and Jody, particularly, yeah. because they were both uh, the singing and speaking voices, while as later on they started bringing in some stars to do the speaking roles and stuff. I think, I think Jody and Paige are probably the voices are really so close to who they really are naturally that it's very difficult for them to do something else. Hi. Hi. Um, it's not really a question, but can you sing a part of a movie? Can I sing? Can you sing? Well, that's actually something I was going to ask you guys about. I was thinking all the of you that are dressed up 
in uh, bell costume should come up here with me and we'll sing. We need all bells. Come on, bells. We, we needed all bells up on stage. <laughs> come on, you wore those dresses for a reason. Come on up here, let's yeah, go. Yeah, we want to get your picture in the Disney magazine. How about that? Cool. We have a couple more out there. We have a bell with, where is she? I saw her earlier. Where'd she go? I'm stuck. What are you sticking on? What is on? that? Tape. Yeah. Are they coming? Anybody else? What do we have? Only two? No way. Come on. We saw a bunch of bell. No? Is that it? Come on. There we go. There's Here we go. One. Yeah. Come on. I thought I saw a bunch of uh, blue and white outfits, too. Are they not here now? Come on. <laughs> this is really sticky. Don't st I you just have to go stuck to it. I think you it. have to go around the side. <laughs> do you guys sing? Oh, I do. I do. Well, okay. I do. I do. I like theater in high school. All right. Well, we're going to sing a little of the opening number, and when we get to the part where you say, good morning, Belle, I'll go like this, and you all say good morning, Belle. Can you do that? Okay. Are you ready? Come on. Michael, why don't you give them your microphone? Oh, sure. Because I'm not singing this song. <laughs> there. Okay, you guys share. We'll share. Okay, ready? There goes the baker with his tray like always. The same old bread and rolls to sell. Every morning just the same since the morning that we came to this poor provincial town. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Aren't they fabulous? Well, he, he wants your picture. Here you go. Perfect. Thanks, you guys. One more. Okay. Sorry for like you guys want to turn around so the audience is to your back. This is for the magazine. You guys are going to be in it. Okay. Do you want to do this at the very end? Uh, we're going to do it so with you're equal later. with no, this X. We want to do it with all the bells. Our best side, huh? <laughs> I wish I'd wear my ball gown. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You are great. The costumes are beautiful. <laughs> Hi. Hi. We're going to have you ask a question. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. O'Hara, for coming to Anime Miami, for one thing, and you've done a great job over the years. Thank you. Um, Mike. I have a couple of questions. Now, um, my first one, as a Disney cast member, I'm curious personally, have you ever been to the new Fantasyland over at, in uh, Orlando? Yes. What yes, you... and actually when they opened up the, the new Beauty and the Beast section, mm -hmm. we were there for the opening. It was amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you, before you were cast as Belle, um, now you said you were working with Broadway for many years, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, is there any particular... Uh, meh, actress or any Broadway plays or musicals that has always been stuck in your heart for a very long time? Well, there, there are a few Broadway actresses, of course, Julie Andrews being one of them. Someone said they, they started crying when they said, yes, thank you. Um, I was so, my childhood was about Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and I grew up idolizing Julie Andrews and uh, I met her at Disney, at the, one of the Disney events and my, Michael was like, I, I couldn't even go up and talk to her. I was so nervous. I was just shaking. Mike was like, come on, come on. Anyway, he brought Julie Andrews over to me, and we just started talking, and she ended up hanging out with us for the whole weekend. It was amazing. <laughs> it was like the dream come true, but Julie Andrews definitely, and I, um, I've always been a Judy Garland fanatic, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of musicals, oh, man, there's so many great ones. I'm a, I have a very soft spot for Rodgers and Hammerstein. And of course, for Mankin and Ashman. <laughs> so, thank you very thank much. Thank you.
All right, before the next question there, we have a question face to face, I guess, with your alter ego here. Um, I was just wondering, what's one of your favorite quotes from the movie? Gaston, you are positively primeval. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Thank you. I love that one too. I love to pick on him. <laughs> Richard White, who played Gaston, was a real good friend of mine. We'd actually played opposite each other on, in many, many shows and musicals and stuff. So it was quite the cut up when we were making the movie. <laughs> I had a few scenes where I really let him have it. And of course, Disney said, no, cut, cut, no. <laughs> Bill can only go so far at letting Gaston have it. <laughs> so. um, how is it that, uh, in, the, in the way that you're relatable to like, Bell, other than the... I'm sorry, what her name? Relatable to Bell? How can I relate to her? Yeah, every like, way. In every way? Yeah, it was really strange. I was, I was telling one of my friends in the line today, it was really the only time in my whole career where I felt like, this part was like mine and it was like written for me and I'm sure a lot of people felt that way but it was just a really strange almost um, almost like religious experience <laughs> because I, I'm never a really confident person with auditions and I've been working in New York on Broadway since I was 17 and Michael and I were dating and he actually proposed to me like two I days ago. I found out she got the movie, she got this really <laughs> great apartment the next day I proposed to her. It was no big surprise to anybody. I wouldn't have married you then. <laughs> 25 years later. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 25 years of marital bliss. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, but it was, um, I, I think what I, I related to the bookworm, feeling odd. You know, as a little kid, I was, you know, I was in theater. That was odd at that time. And um, I was like listening to George Gershwin and, you know, my friends were into Led Zeppelin, you know, and Janis Joplin. <laughs> so I, would, I definitely identify with the odd. <laughs> um, there are so many beautiful songs in Beauty and the Beast. I was wondering which one is your favorite. Oh, boy. A favorite song from Beauty and the Beast. I think the title song is my favorite. And that's the last song that Howard Ashman wrote before he passed away. And um, I was actually... Uh, asked to do all the press because um, Angela Lansbury didn't want to sing the song and you know she, I told you she one time in the studio so they asked me to learn the song and sing it for the press for before we opened and I went over to Alan Mankin's house and he started playing it and I was singing it and he said oh, we have to call Howard Howard was in the hospital at this time and he was really really sick and he would never heard his song sung except by Alan Mankin so I started singing it to Howard over the telephone and uh, that was the last time I actually had a chance to, to talk to Howard. So that song has double special meaning to me for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. You're back. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> um, when you first got the uh, role for Belle in Beauty and the Beast, what were your first reactions? Scream. <laughs> <laughs> I was screaming. At, the, at that time, we had, you know, the, the little voicemail the things that were... Now it's totally different. But I just put on my machine. It was like, this is blah, 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 blah from Disney. Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't even my agent. So I knew from the conductor that had called me because we were going to have to get together and pick some keys. And I was like, that's it. I got it. And I didn't even know I'd had the job. But no, I started screaming and jumping up and down with Michael. That's what I did. My first reaction. I see. And then I and, sat down and prayed, to be honest with you, and thank God for the job. <laughs> yeah. And um, there are a lot of beautiful songs in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Um, when one of the employees asked you if you could sing all the songs, what were your reactions to you singing every song from Beauty and the Beast, like Belle and, and all those other ones? Well, I, I put a bunch of them together for the Legend Award. Then when I got my Legend Award, I put together a medley because Belle doesn't really sing a whole song you know, by herself. So when I did that, we put together a medley, and I love singing all the songs. Be Our Guest is a lot of fun, too. Yes. And uh, one, one last question before I leave. Um, the film was re-released in 3D. What was your reaction for that? I thought I was going to hate it, but I actually really loved it. Um, it's not how I'd want to see the movie on a regular basis, you know, but... Um, but I really loved it. I thought it was very special. You really liked it too, didn't you, Michael? I did. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought what they did with the 3D was um, 
uh, minimal, you know, it, it, it wasn't overdone, I, I didn't think, and I thought it added to the sense of um, the Depth. scope, the size of the, of the um, uh, type of environment that they found themselves in. Uh, so, and they, they, I thought they did a really nice job on the translation with it. Yeah, the 3D was amazing. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. There's only one version, you know, there was, um, when, they, when they first, when they, you know, you go back and you look, animation at Disney was pretty much dead. Um, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg was brought in uh, at the time to run another division at Disney, and they said to Jeffrey, they said, look, you're going to revive the animation uh, version of our studio. And he said, I don't want to do it. And they said, you don't have a choice. You're going to do it. Um, and he said, okay. And the first, the first film that was under Jeffrey's tutelage was a little version of a, of a seaside thing called Little Mermaid, uh, which, which happened That's to do right. pretty 25 well. Years old. His second movie was Beauty and the Beast. Um, uh, and, and so, um, you know, it was a it was a time when um, it was a very strict formula because what had worked in the past they thought that's the formula we're going to use one ballad for for the princess that's it one ballad uh, one, x number of up tempo ninety minute framework that's that's what it was and so there was actually uh, a song called Human Again uh, which was written Human and again. fully yeah. animated uh, and when they put the film together, it was too long. And so they went to Howard and Allen and they said, this movie's too long, man. We got to cut it. What do you want to cut? And that's, the, that's the, the song that they ended cutting out of the, out of the original release of the movie. Uh, and it was, it was, it was Howard's, actually Howard's, it was Howard's favorite, favorite song. song because he felt like it, <clears throat> he felt that was his strongest really work in the film. explained uh, what, what those other people, the animated objects were going through and the excitement that it brought to the film. Uh, so he was very disappointed. But then with the success of Beauty and the Beast, uh, when they re-released it later, they put that material back in. I was disappointed. We have, of all the releases of, of Beauty and the Beast, there's only one version of it that has human again in it. And it was the second time they released it. All of the uh, sequential yeah. movies, releases after that, don't have it in it. So and they have the scene thought, that, that you know, I ad-libbed with Robbie in there, too. Yeah. Robbie yeah, so, and I ad-libbed a scene where I was teaching him how to read. You know, you, you and talk, they put it in the yeah. movie with Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. There was some music that was written specifically for the Broadway show. A lot of the Beast's music was, but other pieces of music had been written and actually animated in the original film, cut out and then put back in. So. Yeah. Hi. 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 Um, I wanted to ask you, if you were allowed to do another Beauty and the Beast movie, like a sequel, would you want to? Of course, I would love to. I don't think they'd see me at this age doing it. But I think I still sound would be the Belle same. Belle much later in life. <laughs> Belle. Belle's grandma. <laughs> Belle much later in life here. Uh, you know, it was interesting because um, uh, Beauty and the Beast, when it, when it was released, they did call up, you know, Paige and say, hey, we're doing, we're doing a, second, a second movie. And they, they did uh, Enchanted Christmas, uh, which was... Uh, uh, a prequel because everybody said how do you how do you follow up i mean the beast turns into the prince at the end of the movie what does he do something wrong and he gets turned back into the beast or what you know uh, so it was interesting it was a really interesting take on it but um not sure how they would go back and do a prequel to a prequel you know yeah. but and if you have any ideas let me know <laughs> yeah absolutely okay a follow up question have you ever watched beauty and the beat have like, i ever watched it it's a video on youtube it's a Basically, oh, Beauty and the Beat. Yes. Oh, I loved it. Is that is yes. that the guy going through the neighborhood? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's true. It's, we laughed. Oh, we it was a riot. <laughs> I had more people saying that. We laughed the first time we saw. Yeah, we, it was great. We loved it. It was, it was a hoot. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, like, there's a book. I can't remember if there was a title on it, but it was like around the beginning when you're reading around with the sheep. And you borrowed the book from the old man. Also, I was wondering, like the book, like during, when, while you're describing it, was it about Aladdin or was it about something else? Bill was actually reading Cinderella. Oh, okay. No. And because um, I heard it was like about Aladdin instead. 
<laughs> well, it's you curious. know, different animators will tell you different things. I just yeah. go by what Howard and Alan told me because I asked the same question. I said, "What is she? Here's where she meets Prince Charming." You know, oh, wow. and they said it's Cinderella. That's <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I know for a lot of people, your Beauty and Beast, the Disney version, was the first time they even heard the fairy tale or anything like that. I'm, I'm a huge fairy tale person, and. I mean, did you have any idea that you were going to be just stamped marked as the main, you know, Belle of all time? Like, because the Disney version is what people will always go back to because that's the first thing they ever grew up knowing. Did you have any clue that you're going to be in history for now on like that? No, I had no idea. I thought it would be done, be successful, and be forgotten for a while, you know. Oh my. This, this huge success of this film has just well, totally changed my life forever. And... Um, we're very blessed to have that. And um, it's still, you know, going on. And now I'm, my other love is painting. And I've been an artist since I was three years old. And Disney signed me three years ago as an artist. So I'm now painting Disney Beauty and the Beast oil paintings. Wow. Have you ever so, seen the Thomas Kincaid version of the Beauty I'm actually in, in a uh, art gallery with Thomas Kincaid. No way. It's the most beautiful version. Thank you. I love that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. No problem. Hi. Um, Hi. First off, Belle is my favorite Disney princess ever. You have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just wanted to ask you how you felt on your last day of recording uh, the movie. Like your. We were all very melancholy, and yeah. you know. But then they kept saying, you know, it's going to be a very short amount of time. We're going to have you so busy back in the studio doing Belle's voice for other projects. But it was very melancholy. We all got a little choked up that yeah. day. We also had a nice celebration. Thanks. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know um, uh, that in the recording, the way Disney works, uh, Paige actually recorded like the entire film in like the first three days she went to work. Uh, and, and they record the artist uh, and they put a video camera on them. And then uh, to the chief animators that are animating that particular character, uh, they send them the footage of that person in the studio recording all those lines. Uh, and so the animators start to watch the individual performers and they start to take nervous ticks. You know, the little things we all do that make us individuals. Paige used to have long hair and she always used to brush her hair back out of her face like this. There were certain, uh, uh, you know, expressions that she would do that the first time I saw the film, I about fell out of my chair because I was like, God, that's my wife, you know? Uh, it was very strange. My, um, sisters, then, my sisters started screaming. Yeah, when they saw you know, it was, it was, it was very strange. But then over, uh, you know... Over time, the animators put some stuff together, they come back, they fine tune it, they change the script, they re-record it, they do it. So it was a process that went Two on years. and on and on for several years, yeah. which most people don't know. They think it's a one-shot deal and it's done. It's not, at least No, I was Disney, back in the studio off and yeah. on for two years. Yeah. When Disney does it, never ever does the does the voice actor get put in a studio and have to lip sync to time up to animation? The animation is always done to suit the actor, which is a completely, in, in most animated sequencing, that is not the way it's normally done. So it's a very different process. And yeah, she was in the studio off and on for almost three years putting this film yeah, together. So, two, yeah. uh, uh, you know, and, and another interesting thing was as typically they don't ever. Uh, it's one person in the studio just doing lines, and they'll do it. They'll say, okay, now do it this way, and now do it this way, or now do it this way, and then they move on to the next line. When um, uh, Paige and Robbie uh, started working together, they asked if they could record together, which is also very unusual. And uh, we think that the interaction that they had because they were actually playing off each other made the film a, a better thing than it was, which was, again, unusual for animation. And they actually encouraged us to embellish or ad lib or whatever and that's how the little scene with him, me teaching him how to read. Good old, good old David Ogden Styers. Yes. <laughs> Who plays Cogsworth. Cogsworth. A lot of those lot funny of those lines, lines he made those up. They were just <laughs> ad libs. You know, uh, uh, chocolates promises you don't intend to keep. That was an ad lib that made it into the film. He was a hoot. Uh, and if it's not Baroque don't fix it. That was an ad lib that was, you know, so David <laughs> David just would ad lib, you know, and if they liked it, it was in the it film. It was in the film, yeah, and then, that, then of course Robin Williams got to go crazy when he did With the genie, yeah. <laughs> and they said, "Okay, go, yeah. go." Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, I was.
was just wondering if you've ever had the opportunity to meet uh, actresses that did Belle in different languages? Because I know there's been reunions of different princesses, but in the English dub of the films. Yes, I have, actually. I, I met the Japanese Belle. I met the, um, the Chinese Belle. I met uh, the French one. And then, of course, the Bells that played it in, on Broadway in the national tours. And then that's when my, my husband played the Beast opposite Susan Egan in uh, Los Angeles. And we had a party at one point where a bunch of the Bells got together. It was fun. That must have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there somehow or perhaps um, Disney princesses are connected? Well, I think we're all connected that we all are very grateful. <laughs> and there are a lot of events where Disney will be having like a, a special event or whatever and they will invite us all to sing together and that's a lot of fun. Done that a few times. <laughs> Yeah, tell them about some of the events you've done. You did Central Park. You did, <clears throat> yeah, Central uh, Park, we had 100,000 people. Talk about going out and singing and you see 100,000 people. What was that, Pocahontas premiere? Pocahontas, yeah. Um, not as scary as the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I walked out, there was like Barbara Streisand, Nick Nolte, <laughs> Warren Beatty was here. I was like, okay, I'm singing live. Concentrate. My wife, my wife, <laughs> she, 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 my wife is... Um, uh, she. Uh, You're not going to tell the Celine Dion story. <laughs> All right, you want to hear the Celine yeah, Dion tell, story? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she. <laughs> I was sharing. They brought in Debbie again. Allen to do the choreography right. for the Go Oscar. Ahead. Debbie Allen was the. Uh, well, y'all know who Debbie Allen is. Um, and so they're going to do the sequence from Beauty and the Beast live. And so Paige was going to sing live, and our friend Richard Ryder was Gaston, and the chorus was going to do the opening number live. And so they're in rehearsals, and everything's going well, and it sounds great, and it's beautiful, and Paige shows up for a dress rehearsal, and they, they put Paige in this... We never understood it, because if you go back and you look at the footage... She's in this, like, blue... It's Bo Peep. It's like a Bo Peep costume. It has nothing to it's do like with a, Belle. Like and it had pantaloons. Fluffy like pantaloon, out. blue thing that if and you go back checkers, and look at it. Like checkers. It was horrible. Remember, it's like, what? <laughs> what? And so Paige is like really upset, right? You know, she's in her dressing room uh, before the show. And, and she's really upset, but she's too nice. So tell them the Celine story. Well, now. I can't she's say. She's too nice. I can't say the exact words that Celine said. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but at, she, at, she, at this time, you know. Uh, uh, Celine Dion was a huge, uh, huge Canadian star. star. She wasn't yeah. a pop star in the U.S. at that point in time. So when they released the pop version of Beauty and the Beast, they hired Celine and Peebo to do it. And so Celine was over to, to oh, sing yeah. she the pop a, version of it that night. And she became a superstar, as you know. Um, but we were sharing a dressing room, and, and she had two dresses. And they came in, and they said, uh, Miss Dion, we'd like for you to wear the red dress because Miss Lansbury is wearing black. She said, No. I'm wearing the black one. I paid a lot of money for this. Thank you. <laughs> Back to her makeup. <laughs> and the guy's like, and I'm watching this giggling and here's to myself. And this blue pants. And I'm wearing thing this. Going, How did this happen? <laughs> and I'm a lot older than Celine. And I was like, I should know better by now. And she just said, Paige, you have to learn to be a. <laughs> she did. Learn to be that. And I was like, wow, this young girl, she's 24 years old. She's teaching me a lesson. <laughs> she was really nice, though. I mean, she was tough with them, but she was really sweet to me. I really liked her. So, and like her still. She lives in our Las Vegas. So, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but they have done the, a written backstory to The Beast uh, called The Beast Within. Um, they have released it in the parks. I'm not sure if it's in bookstores yet, but uh, I read it and it is fantastic. And I suggest that everybody here takes a read. Who wrote Fantas it? Who wrote it? Fantas um, I don't know. The Beast Within. The Beast Within. We'll look the it up. The Beast Within. Yeah. And it, not to spoil anything, but uh, it turns out that the Beast and Gaston were actually friends. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, well, it's not like it's, it's, it's not at really childhood like, friends before. Yes, childhood okay. friends. Interesting. So uh, I thought that maybe you had read it or. I haven't, but now I'm going to go it's get it. Fantastic. Thank so, you. Okay. Thank Bye. you. That's a good suggestion. Cool. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Um, 
I have a question. I'm not sure if you're. Fa- I'm pretty sure you're familiar with uh, Sophia the First. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a reason why you didn't do the cameo for that one, or for which thing? What did, did Sophia she say? Sophia the First. Sophia. The animated uh, show on Disney Channel. It's oh, new right, now. Right. Yeah. Is there a reason why you didn't do the cameo? Can you tell us or no? I think that's probably when you get to be around my age, they decide that you're too old to do the voices anymore. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jody and I, a bunch of us, when, when you turn 50, and I'm past way fast, 50 mm-hmm. now. Way past 50. <laughs> yeah. They say it's just time. They get I'll hired, pay for that one later. They hire someone younger. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Maybe I should do what Robbie did and just send my tape in and change my name. <laughs> Hi. Hi, sweetie. Um... I was just wondering, you don't have to, but my favorite song was the end of the Belle Reprise, where um, after she runs into oh, the Oh, I field. want adventure in the Great yeah. White Summer. I was just wondering if you could sing that, <laughs> if, if it's all right. Here, give a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> How does this start, Gaston? Oh, no, the, but there's summer. something before that. Oh. No, when, when she's running into the field, it's after the Gaston Oh, that part, part. okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the Julie Andrews Sound of Music part. Yes. <laughs> they even said that. They copied Sound of Music when they did that animation. What am I sticking to? There's something The here. tape. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. I want it more than I can tell. And for once it might be grand to have someone understand. I want so much more than they've got planned. Thank you I think so I much. picked a key that was higher, but that's okay. Still got <laughs> Thank it. you. You still got it. Thank you, darling. After 23 years, you still got it. After Thank you. 23 years. <laughs> um, when the film was nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture, I think in 1992, what was your reaction? Were you like, oh my God, this film was nominated for Best Picture of the Oscars? <laughs> yeah, what was, good. what was your reaction? I was, I was pleasantly shocked. I really was. And then when I heard about them doing, you know, the, the, all the Academy Award nominations for all the songs, and they had talked about Lin, Linda Ron... No, it wasn't Linda Ronstadt. It was... Um, who was this pop star that was going to do my songs? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, it'll come to me. It was a Lin- it was this- uh, Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack? No, it was Linda. It was Linda Ronstadt, I think. Anyway, Ronstadt. it was one of the big pop stars. They said, "Are you going to do your songs?" And Jeffrey Katzenberg said, "Then you can't have the songs." Oh. <laughs> he said, "You take the artists that did them in the movie." or we're not going to sing them. So thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, yeah. As, as, a, as a sidebar to that, you know, um, uh, the film was so critically acclaimed and well-received when it opened. We expected, you know, we expected the music awards, the music nominations, the book nomination, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but a, an animated film had never, ever been nominated in the live-action category I, before. I know. Uh, That's right. And, and yeah. when, when the uh, nominations came out, uh, I was in, uh, we were in L.A. because I was doing Phantom of the Opera there at the time. Uh, the L.A. community was very upset uh, because they felt like uh, it, it was wrong for them to put this film up against uh, live action. They felt like it was wrong. Um, so that was the reception from the from the film community. Um, I, I, I think that Silence of the Lambs won. Uh, uh, that's the, film, that's the film that won Another that Another family year. film. <laughs> A close family film, yeah. Uh, but, you know, at least Beauty and the Beast now will have the distinction of being the only f- only animated film to ever be nominated because then now they have a separate category, a separate category for, uh, animation. for animated films. Yeah. So uh, it was um, completely unexpected. Completely ah. unexpected. Even I, the people at Disney were blown away by and it. And actually, it did win Best Picture for the Golden Globes it that did, year. It did, for the Golden Globes. And, um, it did, yeah. actually. That yeah. was pretty special. Yeah. And I got to talk to Bette Midler for like a yeah. half an hour. Wow. She wanted my voice teacher. <laughs> she says, who's your voice teacher? I want to work with it and l- develop my head voice. And we, we, it was really cool. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you, Miss O'Hara. And let me just say that you are the most very talented and very sweet person that I have ever met here in <laughs> Miami. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Come here. He's 
so sweet. You were adorable. Thank you. Mwah. I appreciate it. See, I told you I was sticking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you like Gaston? Like... Tell me about Gaston. He's funny. <laughs> and I mean, funny is funny. And how can you not like funny? Well, because he have a evil eyes, you know. Well, and I'm, always, always, I'm partial always... to, you know, because Richard White, I, you know, I'd known for 15 years when he got cast, you know. So I, to me, it's Richard and Gaston, you know. That's just like he says. <laughs> Nobody say no to Gaston. <laughs> That's pretty good, you know. And I love that line. He says, "I'm especially good at expectorating." When, uh, when, I, when I was and doing, I will marry <laughs> there you go. When I was doing uh, the version in L.A., uh, uh, they uh, asked me to cover Gaston and do it because the guy was going away for a while as well. And I said, I, I, "I'm not Gaston." They said, "You'll be better than the guy that's doing it." I said, "Okay." So it ended up being so much fun to do him on stage. It was so, <laughs> it was so much fun to be that bad. It was. Want to play the beast it was really anymore? Great. <laughs> He uh, loved playing Gaston. No. <laughs> when Paige and I put our act together, we traveled around doing a concert act together. We actually put the number together uh, where he throws around and does the whole, you know, uh, marry me sequence in the, in the song. Um, uh, we, we put that in because Gaston was great. He was a lot of fun. So um, that's it? <laughs> okay, I have a soft spot for Gaston. I admit it. Oh, but you, never over the beast. Never. You love the beast? Of course. Which one? <laughs> um, Gaston or the beast? Oh, the beast. No question. You got it. <laughs> the beast. And uh, that's the end? That's the end. You so have another beautiful. question? And no. I can tell you want to do Gaston one, one little. <laughs> Go ahead. I can tell. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> yes. That's pretty good. And not bad, huh? I could tell he's been dying to do it up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hug. So apparently the creators, like, they don't um, have their parents in the movie because it matures the character. That's what we've heard recently. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened to Belle's mom? Like, did the animators tell you, like, how she passed or anything like that? There have been several different versions where the mother has been alive and the mother has been passed. They decided to do this version with her being passed and her not having brothers and sisters. Um, that was just their choice. So I think um, I'd ask the writers about Belle's mom, and they said, we treat the story as if she doesn't remember her. She was raised by her dad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Belle. Um, you're dressed as Belle. You didn't yes. come up here. Come on. I did. I came she up. Did. Okay, she was up go. here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I grew up with Disney and theater, and, and you mentioned Celine Dion. I was in love with her in high school. Everyone else was listening oh. to Nine Inch Nails, and I... Just, I admired Celine Dion, I loved you, and I loved Jodie Benson, and I just, that's Aww. what I grew up with. I was teased all the time. Aww. And I just, I wanted to ask how you felt when Celine Dion decided to do the title song, and, and how you felt listening to that, you know, hearing Angela Lansbury and her doing the title, and Mrs. Potch, that's the best version of him. <laughs> of course. But well, Angela Lansbury, as I told Dion? you, yeah. I idolized her. You know, I saw her on Broadway in so many different shows, and I didn't know who Celine Dion was yet. Because she, in this country, wasn't really famous yet. Yeah, it was after that one. After that. <laughs> but yes, when I heard Celine sing, my jaw dropped. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. She's an amazing, amazing singer. She's just taken a break now from her show in Las Vegas where her husband's being treated for cancer, and so she's, she's taking care of him for a while. So she's not doing her show right now, but she's, she's a very special woman. Thanks. Thank you. It was wonderful. Yeah, Paige was very disappointed. She wanted to do the pop version. <laughs> <laughs> she told don't, don't let her kid you. She wanted to do it. I know. Um, why, did, why didn't you? It's, and it's I just asked like, Celine, don't get me wrong. But no, no. That, I mean, I could do it, but they saw me as a yeah. legit Broadway person, and they yeah. said, no, 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 no. It doesn't fit. Doesn't they, uh, when, a little, a little backstory. When um, 
you know, Beauty and the Beast was the first animated film that Disney decided to try and turn into a stage version, a live Broadway stage piece. Uh, the reason that they did that uh, was because um, Michael Eisner was the head of Disney at the time, and, and they had a big birthday party for him in New York. And they hired Paige, and they hired Richard, and they hired all of the people from the film to come in and sort of do a live presentation of the music at that birthday party like a miniature for him. Version. Like uh, you know. And that sort of planted the seed uh, for them to think about doing the Broadway version of it. And when that was moving ahead, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg actually picked up the phone and called Paige and said, look, this is going to happen, and if you want to do it, we will make sure that you're doing it. Uh, and at the time, it was, a huge, it was a huge decision for Paige because she had committed to do a production of South Pacific in Australia that was going to turn around for two years. And it was, it was Rodgers and Hammerstein. It was a role that she had yeah. always wanted to do, and it was a huge, huge production for her. And at that time, there was no way to know how it was going to translate. You know, it, it, we had no idea. And it could have been awful, <laughs> you know, it could have been terrible. Uh, so she had the decision to make and she decided that uh, the film version of Beauty and the Beast was as perfect a rendition of it as she could ever possibly do. And so that was really the decision why she didn't do the Broadway version of it and let it go. But it was a very hard decision for her, just like, you know, doing a pop version of it. It was, a, it wasn't, that wasn't completely her decision, but uh, ultimately, you know, um, the film for Paige, I think, will, well, it's 25 years almost now, yeah. you know, it's 25 years and, and the life of the film is amazing. So it, it's something she'll have with her, her whole life. I think God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And I think that it was meant to be that Susan Egan got the Broadway part, just as I was meant to do the film. I just, there was something in my gut that told me I had to go to Australia and do South Pacific, and Michael came with me. We were there two years. Um, it was amazing. We learned to scuba dive. <laughs> but I also felt, and he's not telling you this because he's being nice, but now and then he's nice. <laughs> I felt too old for the part for Broadway. No. Um, I, you know, I've been on stage so long in New York, and the critics all knew me. I mean, I, I, shoot, 15 years earlier, I'd started Showboat on Broadway. They knew I was in my 30s, and I, you know, to play a character of Belle who's supposed to be 18, I just thought they're gonna, I don't want to put myself in front of the critics doing that. In retrospect, I could have pulled it off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but. I love South Pacific, too. I do, too. It was an amazing time, and like I said, it was meant to be Susan's part for the Broadway. Thank you, everybody. Uh, please give a big hand again for Chage and Michael. Thanks, you guys. Now, uh, before we cancel this, we'd like to do, of course, our uh, famous audience pose picture here. So if you guys could arc over to oh, the wonderful. stage. Here, let's get these waters up. As many people as possible. We want to make it make it look good. Come on, everyone up. Everyone come up. Come up. If you're in the seat, you're not following instructions. Let's go. Oh, this is so cool. You guys, thanks so much. You've been so sweet. I appreciate it. Okay. Do you want us to sit down with you?